And I've been wanting to come here for a while. I had, um, I remember the first memory of Mauritius is when I was 11. I got a postcard from a friend of mine whose family had come here on holiday. And so she sent this postcard of the beach and it just looked so beautiful. So, I mean, from then I was thinking, oh, it looks somewhere amazing to go. And it's been a few years we've been trying to book the show. And um, so, yeah, it's been something present in my mind for a while. So I was really, really glad we could make it work. The album we're touring here is called Land of Gold, uh, which released uh, back in 2016. Uh, we began writing it in 2015, um, and it was written entirely in response to the ongoing refugee crisis. Um, as we all remember, 2015 was the summer that really um, uh, it reached new levels and new heights, and it was kind of dominating the news feed where I live in London, and everyone was talking about it, and it was incredibly upsetting. and. Um, and the tragedy is that it has continued, of course, at the same levels and worse, and yet it's no longer at the center of our, our news feeds. It's, it's something that's still going on. So continuing to tour about it, continuing to play the music and, and engage with people about it um, has been a really lovely thing to get to do. Um, we did, um, we did uh, fundraising for Help Refugees, which is a wonderful organization uh, based out of the UK on the entire last part of the tour, and were able to raise a really great amount of money for it as well. So it was nice to make the influence a bit more tangible as well at some point. Um, but also I really believe in the power of, of just music and art being able to connect people on issues like this where sometimes Sometimes it's not as easy with dialogue um, between people uh, and I feel like art and music can kind of connect people from a heart space about things that they can often get too political about and therefore not agree on with their minds. But with your heart you will generally agree. So I feel like music can reach that. In my life uh, as a human being, the, uh, this is a, an issue close to my heart um, and is something I'm continuing to remain involved with. Um, I do do a lot of work with Help Refugees in the UK. Um, and I've got some work I'm doing with them in September back in London um, and I do very much imagine that that would continue to be a, a big part of, of my life. Um, I obviously don't know in what way that will continue to connect to my music because as you say I will make a new album and that will probably have a different story so it might not be that every album I make is, is connected to a social cause or this social cause but, but in my life absolutely I will remain connected. This philosophy of yours obviously runs through the, the family because your father also had this in mind when he started to uh, popularize his music around the world. In what way this influenced you also? I mean, of course, my father and everything he did was a, a huge influence for me in my music and in my life as well um, because he was my teacher and my father. Um, he influenced me as a musician, as an instrumentalist, but also as, as you might know, he was the one who uh, came up with the idea for the concert for Bangladesh, which happened in 1971. And, and that was such an important concert, not just for that particular issue, but because it was the very first sort of benefit concert of that kind, which had never really been done before. So it set a template for so much incredible work that came from there. Um, so of course I was always influenced by the idea that music could, could make a difference because I saw it in my father's life. I began playing music with my father and, and he taught me, and then I began to perform with him. So um, the idea of, of musical inspiration happening with another human being, you know, two people playing together and hearing each other and learning from each other, um, and also the nature of our Indian music, that it is very improvised and that we really connect with the other musicians on stage, and, and that is a huge part of how, how I get inspired, even in the classical music, is you play together, it's a connection. Um, so that is kind of how I grew up knowing how to make music. So even when I moved into sort of non-classical forms of music and doing things more experimentally, I do find I work the best and the most easily when I'm, when I'm inspired by that connection with another human being. Like I just flow more easily when I'm, when I'm feeling that, that energy um, than when I'm sat on my own with a piece of paper. You know? um, so for me, yeah, collaboration is a really important part of how I know how to make music. And so of course, you know, the more incredible the artist, the more inspiring their work, that will, that will feed me. So um, I do look to, to work with incredible collaborators when I can. It, when, I did, uh, when I did Rise, which was in 2005, that was my first time working with electronics. And um, at the time, I loved making the album, but I didn't like touring it live because the technology at the time was quite limited as an instrumentalist. 
of how you could um, incorporate the electronic elements and play live. So I felt like as a live musician, I was really, I was really bound to the computer and I didn't like that feeling at all. And so I said I would never do it again. It has changed completely. You know, so in the time that I swore off it, it has changed completely. And so Land of Gold was for me in a way of coming back to, coming back to that technology and re, re-engaging with how much more you can do now. As a live musician, it's, it's not limiting. It actually opens up new worlds now and you can play in different ways that you can't do acoustically. So it's really exciting and it's really inspiring. So yeah, I absolutely think I will.
we're just exploring the story instrumentally, um, different shades of it in different ways we can, trying to evoke the, the human emotion behind the stories that can so easily just become numbers and figures as we become desensitized with these constant news stories of tragedies. So just to try and humanize these stories again the best way we can. Um, all the music we're playing tonight was co-written by Manu Delago. We play as a quartet. Um, I'm with three incredible musicians, two from London, one from New Delhi. Uh, well, two live in London. Uh, Manu Delago is Austrian. Uh, and he is the main collaborator, I would say, on Land of Gold. He co-wrote all the music with me. And he's on stage as the hung player and the percussionist. Um, so he plays all kinds of, you know, electronic, like live triggered drums, and um, and I play obviously the sitar, um, but I also do a lot of live looping and a lot of pedal work, which is not very common for a sitar player. Um, so you'll see I sit with my feet down, kind of more like on a chair, not the traditional sat on the floor. Um, and then we've got a lovely pianist, keyboardist, uh, upright bassist from London, um, and he's also doing a lot of a lot of button pushing too. Um, so yeah, between all of us, we kind of do a mix of really acoustic work and also using the technology, but never in a way that it's not being played. You know, like I, as a musician, I don't always love going to shows where I see people having to play with playback and, and it, yeah, it's, it's a bit frustrating. I, I want to see people play, you know. So that was something that really was important to me when we were designing Land of Gold was like, how can we have the sound of the album? So it has that same broad, texture of the big bass and the big but still everything is played everything is played live you know so you have the energy of musicians playing together by experimenting with all these kind of technologies you're giving a sort of new life to classical music in a way maybe i mean it, I, I tend not to i tend not to do things from that mindset um I, I think i have to make music from a very sort of personal space and if it's something that inspires me and feels honest to me then then i do it um and if that has a byproduct of, of somehow bringing in new elements, um, then that's that's great. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> um, you, you're giving me giving a, a new life to, to classical music, which is where you came from, in a sense. Well, I see a lot of young young people come back to the classical music through listening to people like me. There are other people who do similar things to what I do, and it, and it does really help bring bring a new audience back to their own music. Or you know, especially in India, for example, where maybe a lot of young people don't listen to the classical music, but they might listen to someone like me, and then from there get introduced to the music of their heritage, which is which is really beautiful. I actually had a piece from my first album included in the UK syllabus a long time ago for instrumental study. To study Indian classical music, they studied this piece of mine that was composed by my father. Um, and then last year, as you say, they included something I, I had composed. Um, and so for many years now, I've kind of met young people who go, oh, I studied your piece in, uh, in class, and it's really weird. Um, yeah, it's a weird feeling, but it's lovely. Um, I was very pleased that they, they included the female composers in the syllabus. It all happened because of a, a, a kid, a student noticed that there were no female composers on the syllabus, and she began campaigning for them to include female composers and they listened to her and they did it so that was quite inspiring actually and about time i just scored shiraz a silence a silent film from 1928 um, that i scored last year for the british film institute and and i found that really inspiring i've been wanting to move towards that for a while um i've got two young kids and i feel like moving into composing is a, is a really viable option because I can't tour like eight months of the year like I used to, you know. Um, so it's a nice way to stay creative. And, um, and I'm also doing a couple of projects. I'm collaborating with this wonderful electronic artist called Gold Panda, um, who's a friend of mine. And we're doing a, a project in Paris together uh, at the end of next month. And um, yeah. What, what kind of um, stories would you like to, to score? What kind of films do you like to? You know, um, it obviously really depends. I think because of the kind of music I make uh, and the instrument I play, probably a certain type of film would approach me. You know, it, it maybe doesn't fit every kind of film, what I do. Um, so it has to be a good fit where I feel like I can offer it something good. This is no Bollywood. But as far mainstream. as what kind of story, what kind of that, 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 you know, that doesn't matter. We were talking about activism uh, some moments earlier. Uh, what, what are the people, maybe uh, singers or writers or uh, other people that influenced you through their sayings or their songs? 
so many. I mean, Bjork is a huge inspiration, um, just as an incredible female artist, um, composer, who's so individualistic no matter what. Um, Patti Smith, I find really inspiring. Um, gosh, uh, I grew up kind of meeting a lot of incredible artists as well. So that, you know, I mean, George Harrison was obviously a big, a big influence. Um, as an artist and as a person, um, his his humanity and his kind of yeah, just who he was as a person and artist was hugely inspiring. It is an essential part of what we do. I mean, the music I learned is an oral tradition, and so it is passed on person to person. And so, as someone that has learned it and been given it, it does feel very important to also pass that forward. How was it when you were little and you were seeing your father? It's tricky, isn't it? Because it was normal for me. Um, Uh, so I don't have a, a situation to compare it to um, but but I like just now you said you know before you realized who he was and that never happened like he was he was who he was you know there was never kind of dad first and then musician like his his musicianship was was in him that was who he was so even when you were home in the kitchen he would be singing teaching songs he would be always always he was a musician so I, I very much grew up knowing that that's But then you, you went to, to sort of play mm. with his sitar or mm -hmm. um, was it him that introduced you to the It was my mum, actually. Instrument? It was my mum. I was nervous to play and he was nervous to teach me. Um, I th he had never taught someone that young before. I was seven when I started to learn. And so he wanted to wait till I was a bit older and maybe came to him with the desire to learn. And my mum's theory was more, you know, just teach her. Why don't you just start? And if she doesn't like it or if it doesn't work, you can you can stop, you know. So we started together with both of us being quite nervous about it. Um, but quite quickly, it, you know, it became something um, became a very special bond between us, you know, and we both kind of got deeper and deeper into it over the years. I have a very strong sort of friend and family circle that I see and do things with. Um, I do a lot of school stuff for my kids, you know, going to clubs and um, all that fun stuff. Um, what do I do? What do I do? Uh, yeah, I just walked in a fashion show last week for the first time. That was a bit scary, um, but fun. Um, I write. I love to write. Um, and I used to write uh, a bit more officially. I wrote as a columnist for a couple of publications in India several years ago. And I wrote a biography on my dad um, back in 2001. Yeah. Um, so as of now, I'm not doing anything as, as formalized as that, but I obviously write as a musician, I write lyrics, I write. Um, so that's always something I feel like I might go back to in different ways because it does feel like something I really, I really enjoy. And how far do you, um, your origins are from India and, and do you follow what's going on there and um, are there to any an issues? Extent, that yeah, I mean, when, when, I mean, obviously I, I hear about things when, when big things happen and I, I go back fairly regularly to tour and to visit f friends and family. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you. 